Jessica, in just a little over 12 hours, this street behind us is going to be jam-packed with 4,000 cyclists taking on the 2022 Garmin Unbound Gravel. Yeah, we just saw the rollout of the 350 mile distance, about 100 cyclists. Uh, the excitement was huge. So many riders, tons of fans, and above all, beautiful weather today. Uh, might not be this way tomorrow. Yesterday, that was the talk of the town is it has been looking like race day. We're going to have rain, rain in Kansas. Bad news for gravel racing. And it has been hot as heck today. So those roads are drying out. I do think that there is going to be a bit of mud on road. You know, we previewed it, YY Road. That is probably still going to be saturated from the earlier rains this week. But I think that otherwise we're going to have a mostly clean race. That said, riders have been talking about having some plan A's and plan B's should the weather change during the race. Yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind that they'd made uh, Unbound organization has made some course adjustments to the 200 as well as the 350. And so most of the large water crossings are being eliminated from the course, which is great. But we've been hearing riders all morning, uh, pros, everyday common riders, even fans that are saying, well, we're still like hoping for clean bikes or at least being able to run with a paint stick get the bike clean when that mud builds up or get off the bike and run was something that we heard a lot too. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what you got to do. You know, some of the some of the pro riders who do have pro support out here. I was talking to Payson. He has wheels with different tire widths. He has an array of options to choose from both at the start and at the checkpoints. So that is, you know, at the far end of the elite spectrum of the 200 mile race where you are very well taken care of and you have a lot of equipment options and people who are going to take care of your stuff. But that is ultimately not really what the bulk of Unbound Gravel is because people are out here in the thousands racing anywhere from 25 to 350 miles and a lot of them are just trying to get through the day. This is an event that draws so many people in because there's a distance, there's a challenge for everybody. And you know, I am so inspired by the 350 mile people out there. I have actually, I think I've decided, I'm saying this on air, so We're I might have to go it. through it. <laughs> I know, I might have to do that one day. <laughs> Well, hey, another thing too, though, a shout out to all of our non-binary participants that we're going to have this year. I talked to Abby Robbins this morning, and I heard that there are 17 participants amongst the 50, the 100, 200, and I believe even the 350 that identify as non-binary. So there's actually going to be a race for a top three podium in the non-binary 200 mile distance tomorrow. So that's pretty exciting to hear about. Yeah, and in the years I've been coming here, you can just see the community growing on all you know corners of the cycling world here at Unbound. It's special to see a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life here taking on the Flint Hills. Let's talk about the 200 mile race though, Jessica, because that is what we are here with Flow Bikes broadcasting, bringing to you live and on demand tomorrow. We of course have the Lifetime Grand Prix and we have a smattering of other elite riders who are coming who are not part of that 60 rider Grand Prix. I ran into Brent Bookwalter today. Brent Bookwalter, fresh out of retirement, a 16 year career in the world tour, is now here to take on Unbound Gravel in the 200 mile race. I think he might be a dark horse. Ooh, I like that. Uh, yeah, dark horses, those is, are we at that time of the, yeah, the yeah, day? Yeah, let, let's, let's throw some names out. You know, I have to say, although um, earlier this week with Ellen Noble on Flow Bikes Weekly, we were talking about our favorites in dark horses. And I think I had listed Keegan Swenson as one of my dark horse picks. He's gonna be my dark horse because my pick is coming up and uh, I don't think it's the same one that you have. <laughs> I'm picking Pete Stednet. He has been third at this race, he's been second at this race. He is really taking this seriously. He was out, you know, previewing all, you know, nooks and crannies of this course this week. Stedden is fired up. He wants to win it unbound. All right, so we've talked about our dark horses that are favorites for the men's side, but let's get into the women's side because I have a couple of picks that hopefully aren't the same as yours. Let's start with our dark horse for the women. Emily Newsom, actually, for the women. She has everything that it's going to take. And I think that as the conditions are becoming a little bit more favorable for the, uh, you know, pure road riders, which Emily Newsom is definitely coming from the road racing background, that's only gonna help her. If it is a by and large, fast, dry race, she's a powerhouse. She She's gonna be really good. Heidi Franz is here. Former, well, current Pro World Tour rider is currently riding with InstaFun, used to ride with Raleigh Racing. She's here to take on the 200. Was asking for a little bit of advice for me earlier when I interviewed her and I was like, get up front. I was like, you're gonna treat this like a road race. You understand how to race elbows out and be a little aggressive and get that early positioning. So I'm gonna throw her in as a dark horse. I think that 
Heidi France is an excellent pick. She did just win Redlands. Class. Oh, she won Redlands. She's a former cyclocross racer. She knows how to handle these conditions. Heidi France could really upset it. Keep in mind, Heidi is not in the Lifetime Grand Prix. So she, th she could throw a wrench in everything tomorrow. I love that pick. You know, for favorites though, mine is part of the Lifetime Grand Prix, and that is going to be Casey Armstrong. No other than, after talking to her at Sea Otter, so much excitement, similar take as Pete Setna. I have a vendetta at this race. I need to win, or I at least need to like get an opportunity to do better at this race. And so that's the attitude I like seeing. I hope that she is a favorite for tomorrow. She is also my favorite for tomorrow. Casey Armstrong has a grudge match with this race. She was on the podium her first try, not expecting anything, and has not finished it since. Heat stroke, uh, tearing her, her knee apart in a crash last year. She's had a you know, topsy-turvy relationship with Unbound. I'm really pulling for her tomorrow. I think it would just be a wonderful, wonderful day if Casey Armstrong comes away with the win. Yeah, it's gonna be a great time. We look forward to seeing everyone on Full Bikes tomorrow. Kickoff for the 200 is at 6 a.m. Central Time. We go live at noon, and uh, I guess we'll see you there, right? We'll see you there.